Hi, I'm Gareth and in this video we're going to have a little think about this thing called the Cadential 6-4. So we want to understand what 6-4 means and we want to be sure we understand what Cadential means. Well, Cadential means it's a cadence. A cadence is a kind of form of musical punctuation. In other words, it's something that comes at the end of a musical phrase where we have a couple of chords that we call a cadence. So if we go chord five to chord one, we call it a perfect cadence. So I'm in C major, five, one. That's a perfect cadence. Or a plagal cadence is when I go four, one. So that's going chord four followed by chord one. All these examples are in C major for simplicity. Or I could have an imperfect cadence that goes something to five, normally one to five or two to five or four to five. But the perfect cadence and the plagal cadence sound like kind of musical full stops at the end of something. But have a listen to an imperfect cadence. You can hear it's the end of something, but it's not the end of the piece, is it? It's still left a little bit in midair. So if perfect and plagal cadences are kind of musical full stops, then an imperfect cadence feels more like a sort of musical comma. It's probably going to flow on with another phrase. Or you can have the interrupted cadence, which goes chord five followed by chord six, and it's a sort of a punctuation equivalent of a question mark, if you like. feel that slight surprise element when you come to that final chord, that chord six. So these are all cadences. So that's the first thing to be clear about. If I'm talking about something that is cadential, I'm talking about it in its place as a cadence at the end of a musical phrase. Okay, let's talk about the 6-4 bit. Well, 6-4 is taking us back to the Baroque system of figured bass. And the way the figured bass worked in the Baroque is that you had a bass note and the numbers told you which notes to play above the bass note. So if I have C in the bass and I've got 6-4, well the thing is if C is number one, what's number four? So one, two, three, four, number four is F. What's number six? Well if number four is F, G is number five, so six is A, isn't it? So a six, four above C would be C, F, and A. And if a composer, if a performer rather, was reading this in the Baroque period, they would see C in the bass, they'd see six, four written underneath the bass, they would know that we needed C in the bass with a chord that involved F and A. And you can play that in any distribution that you want. All of those are examples of 6-4 because you don't have to have 6 exactly above the bass and 4 exactly above the bass. You can use those spread of notes wherever you want to. But as long as you're using the notes of that chord, the 6-4 is telling you what the chord is. But it's about intervals above the bass. Okay, now then, let's move on to talk about this cadential 6-4 then. Well, a cadential 6-4 is when you have the first chord, the 6-4 above the bass in the way I've just described, followed by 5-3 above the bass. So in other words, if I'm using that example that I've just had, so there was C in the bass, and we've got F and we've got A. Well, the F is 4 and the A is 6. Well, that would move on to this chord, because now you can see I've got C in the bass, E is three above the bass, and G is five above the bass. Another thing to note as well is that the idea of this is not just to say it's this chord followed by this chord, but it's also to say whichever part has the six, the same part should move to five. So it's a kind of melodic thing as well. And whichever part has the four, the same part should move to three. So say for example, I take this example we've just given, six, four, going to five, three, okay? Now let me redistribute that chord. So here's the six, four chord, and here's a five, three chord to follow it. Now can you see that I've got six, 
in the tenor part here, this A in the tenor, that six is going to five, which is G in the same part, the tenor part. And in this example, I've got F in the soprano, and the F is moving down to three, which is the E. But I could have exactly that in a different distribution, like this one. For example, where you can see I've got six here, going to five in the alto part, and I've got four up here in the tenor, going to three in the tenor. So it's telling us about the two chords, six, four above the bass, followed by five, three above the bass, but also encouraging us to put six followed by five in the same part, and four followed by three in the same part. The other thing you may have noticed and this is one thing that makes the cadential 6-4 so attractive to composers, is that the bass note is the same for the 6-4 as it is for the 5-3. So I had C at the bottom, I put 6-4 above it. When I move to 5-3, I've still got the same bass note. So this is why the cadential 6-4 works very nicely, because you can maintain the same bass note, while effectively the 6-4 is one chord and the 5-3 is another chord and we'll see how that plays out in just a moment. Okay, well let's put this in writing and let's talk about a 6-4-5-3 progression, a cadential 6-4, in the key of D major. Now if I were to write this for example, we're not really worrying too much about note values but I mean for argument's sake let's have those like that. And then maybe we'll have the other two parts doing that. Now, we're in the key of D major. I've got A in the bass. I'm putting 6-4 above it. And while the A continues, it could be repeated or just sustained as it is here. I've got 5-3 above it. So let's just check this out. So we look at the first chord. We've got A in the bass. So in D major, a fourth above that A is D. A six above is F sharp. F sharp because of the key signature. Uh, five three above the same bass note, A. Three above it is C sharp. Five above it is E. So now I look at spreading out that chord. Here's my six four spread out. You can see that the tenor is doubling the bass. I've got four in the alto. I've got six in the soprano. So the soprano is going six, five, and the alto is going four, three. So there's my cadential 6-4 in D major. Now if I wanted to put that in Roman numerals, it would look like this. It's 1C followed by 5. Okay, so for people who are much more familiar with Roman numerals, which I suspect is most people, that's what you're talking about. 1C followed by 5. So does it have to be 1C followed by 5. Well, no, it doesn't. And there's another one that is almost as common as that. I'd have to say that 1C followed by 5 is the most commonly found cadential 6-4. But I'm now going to talk about the other one. And it's this. So if I do another 6-4-5-3, it could look like this. Okay, so there's 6-4 followed by 5-3. But this time, I've got to think about what does that mean in terms of Roman numerals? Well, in the key of D major, it's 4-C followed by 1. Okay, so let's think, check it out. We've got D in the bass this time. That B is a 6 going to a 5. The D and the alto is just doubling the bass, that's absolutely fine. And in the soprano, I've got four above the D and the bass, going to three. So I put that together, six, four, five, three. And this time it's going four C to one. So these are the two most commonly used cadential six, four. So you can have one C followed by five, or you can have four C, followed by one. So I hope what I've tried to explain there is clear about 
Well, why is it cadential? Because it's a cadence coming at the end of a phrase. Why is it 6-4? Because that's the Baroque system of figured bass, thinking about intervals above any given bass note. Here's the cadential 6-4 progression, 6-4 followed by 5-3, that's telling me about the chords, but it's also telling me about melodic movement, 6 going to 5, 4 going to 3. And this is how it kind of plays out, if you like, in real life, that you tend to go 1C to 5, or you go 4C to 1. But both of these are 6-4-5-3 progressions. So cadential 6-4, something well worth knowing about.